Darcy. Ik ga net een beetje aangaan daar. Die breers was ik zes. En zo is die hier ons lei. En ik wil misschien net eerst verwijs naar vers en dit is een handelinge. Handelinge hoofdstuk 8. Handelinge hoofdstuk 8. En dit is daar baie mooi en unieke verhaal of ja, verhaal. Waar Philippus die heren maak vir hom een divine appointment met die Ethiopian eunuch, nee. En hy die heren stier om na die man toe wat besig is om te rui op sy chariot. Wat is dit nou? Oh. Waar? Oor. Ok. Ok. Dit klink nie so mooi as die chariot. Dan moet die ander mooier woord in Afrikaans wees. Die chariot is iets wat vir konings is. A koets, a koets. Ja, ek denk dit is a koets, ja. A vierwa. A vierwa? Oh, is dit wat die daar sê? Ok. Nee, ek weet nie. Ek weet nie wat dit hier sê. A vierwa, ok. En, maar anyway, die gedachte is, hier is een man wat soekend is. Ehm, en hy lees, hy lees die bybel, en hy lees uit Jesaja uit, en, en, Philippus vraag vir hom, verstaan jy wat jy lees? En hy sê, nee, ek kan nie verstaan nie, iemand moet my help. En, maar net, net die woorde in vers 35, waar hy vir hom sê, en, 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 en Philip opened his mouth, and began at the same scripture to preach unto him Jesus. It was a, a belangrike vers die, want hy praat volumes. Mm-hmm. Nee. En, um, met ons as christene, um, ons, 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 ons probeer die hele dag mense oortuig, oor Jesus. Is dit nie? Want dit is wat jy vond ons stel is om te doen. <laughs> Dit is vir ons stel aan die hele tyd, om mense te hoor, en dit is jou leven, dit is eindelijk, dit is eindelijk tamelijk, tamelijk tiring. Die hele dag is die beste om mense te oortuig. Nee, en, 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 wat ek hier, kan jy sien, jy weet, die hier word nie oortuig nie, en, 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 as jy met ons deel, dan, your body language gives you away, God's parachute. Ek weet nie sê dat vertel is, maar Kevin het vir ons vertel van een dokterkie wat so 12 jaar oud is in die hospitaal, wat sê nou, ja, het goed gedoen. En sê het een of ander syndroom, waar sê geen uitdrukking op haar gezicht kan kry nie. Die spiere werk nie. So sê, kan die glimlach nie? So as jy met haar praat, sê sê, dit is weird, want sê net die so soos as my vrou my iets stupid sê, weet, dan krij jy daar uitdruk. Maar, maar, jy weet, it's just like, and she's 12 already, so you, you, you try and make her laugh, she doesn't laugh, it's some other syndrome. Um, and, and some people, when you're trying to persuade them, they get that kind of look on their face, you know, and you, and what it for me do is, is that Mark Mena mere determined to try and get some kind of expression from it. But, but the Lord just, placed in my heart that if I'm going to be persuaded it has to be by the Lord Jesus not by my reasoning that's where people have to find their persuasion and that's why this verse is so mooi he, only, he preached to him Jesus and the man actually became persuaded very fast because straight after that he got himself baptized right there on the side of the road by us, we can do it in potholes. We're very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> we need a bit of a rain and a decent pothole and we can have a baptismal service. 
Ja, yeah, anyway. But, so, you know, for ochent, ek wil net, and you know, when the chips are down, if we're going to make it till Jesus comes, it's going to be the persuasion that we have in our heart because of a relationship with Jesus Christ. And we're living in a day today when, when it seems as if, um, you know, people are not easily persuaded anymore. Mm. And I'm just encouraging us, you know, you know, let's just, let's just be persuaded by Jesus in our own hearts. Um, and let's, let's look to the Lord for that. And so in Hebrews chapter 6, where we re- it was last week, uh, and it was challenging last week, not so? It was, it was a very important scripture, highly challenging. God, God is the farmer. He's given us abundance and he's entitled to a harvest. And, and the harvest... Uh, in fact, the harvest has is, is really got not much to do with heaven. Heaven is going, the harvest is going to be done. You're going to arrive and you're actually going to enter into the abundance or the lack of the harvest that you supplied. That's how it is. For us believers, the Bible says that we could suffer loss because our harvest was not good. And... Uh, so he's entitled to a harvest, like we said. But he also gives us a stern warning. He says, but if after my abundant supply, I receive, I come for a harvest and there's thorns and briars, that's verse 8. Be careful, because if you continue like that, I could withdraw the blessing that I've actually you know, handed over to you and so on. And, um, yeah, hey, I tell you guys, it's just, it's, it's serious stuff. Because you go through life and, and you meet people, children um, that have grown up in a Christian home. And, uh, and my heart breaks because you see them and they're struggling to find commitment. They, they, they're trying to put on the face, but actually behind the scenes, they're not really serving Jesus. You know, and I often get, and I mean, you can't always blame the parents, although we have a responsibility to, to be a good example. Mm-hmm. But children will all have to make up their own minds one day. Uh, and, uh, and you just look at that and, and the world's attraction seems so strong. They kind of know Jesus is right, but the world has got such an attraction. It's like wild, absolutely wild. The world, particularly today, is absolutely wild. And, um, and it's, you know, you just long for them to find that persuasion. And it's, it's kind of, they've, they've heard everything. You cannot tell them anything anymore. Um, you know, um, they have to find Jesus. And the persuasion has to come from Jesus. So we're all the same. All right. And then Paul says over here, he starts with an encouraging word after that, and as we said last week, he says, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Uh, sorry, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9. We persuaded better things of you. All right. Uh, come on. It's, it's, a, it's a word of encouragement. From Paul. He says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed to his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And it is a labor of love um, uh, to serve the Lord. If you're lazy, don't put up your hand. That's a belief. You can not just mark, but he has to lap. You can omfall. And your awesome eight blasts. But serving the Lord Jesus is a, is a labor of love. Because serving the Lord Jesus ultimately is not just going to church. That's a pudding, guys. Don't think you're doing a God a favor to arrive at church. If you can't even go to church, you won't even make it to heaven. I'm telling you that right now. If you suckle to get out of bed to go to church, it's like not wanting to kiss your wife anymore. It's the same kind of story. We don't want to kiss your wife anymore. Your, your marriage is in huge trouble. Are you with me? 
You're never ever going to be able to walk the road. And 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 um, it's a labor. That chorus we sang. Uh, to God be the glory. Great things He has done. I've got. I've grown up in this uh, serving Jesus, and you know, as you all know. And uh, but die also died on his son. That was an old hymn. I've a read read hymn book, the Redemption hymn not. And um, we used to sing that song often at the end of a service, uh, because it says, "To God be the glory, great things He has done." And I remember as I was singing that as as a, as a flashbacks uh, into my life, and I remember as a young boy sensing the presence of God and. And after the service, we were all, the whole church would stand up and we'd sing from the bottom of our hearts, giving God the glory for the great, amazing service we'd had. Mm. And so on. But it's not without a labor. It's a labor of love, mm. you know. And, uh, and God does not forget that. You know, I, my mother was a, a German and, uh, and she grew up very hard. Her mother, obviously, her surname was Hegan. And the other side of on the family was Schultz. You know, those are like Germans, I think, from the Second World War, maybe even the concentration camps. And her mother used to swim eat her with a broom. There were like eight children. They never they lived there in uh, near Stadelheim. My grandfather was a a forest what a, a forest foreman, whatever. And uh, anyway, and. Um, so my mother was a taskmaster. I was saying, "Everything all right?" Oh. Yeah. Anyway, the point I'm making. So she worked hard, and us children then had to work hard. So, and she used to entertain people at our house, and we used to have meetings, and she always wanted people in her house. There was a church next door that was perfectly comfortable, but she wanted the people in her house. <laughs> and I remember on a Tuesday night, I was like. 13, 14, 15. We had to carry like 40 chairs, my brother and I. <laughs> from the church to our house. Because my mother said, a house is a nice place to have fellowship. And she used to always have a big table full of food. And we used to have like 40 people there on a, on a Wednesday. And my brother and I, my fingers are still damaged. If you see that, it's skewed. Because now... I could only carry four at a time because my fingers were only long enough for two on each side. Otherwise, I would have taken the six. And every Tuesday, we'd walk up and down and we'd say to my mother, why can't we just meet there? It's a beautiful church hall. No. We want the hospitality of the home. <laughs> you can see I'm mentally scarred as I tell this story. <laughs> and, uh, and all I'm encouraging us here today is his friends, serving Jesus is a labor of love. That's, that's what he called us for. He called us for that. We actually had to serve each other. And, that's got, and, and the problem is today, it's been reduced, the church has been reduced to a show. People go to a show. And, they, and, the, and, and there's so much pressure on the pastors to present something good. Otherwise, the people go to the next show. And the next show. And that's part of the backsliding that we see in the Word of God. But Paul says, God has not forgotten your labor of love. I could tell you a thousand stories. You know, the last one I'll tell you is we lived in Bloemfontein for about five years. And it's a thoroughfare from the Cape to so all the hobos from Cape to Joburg. They travel that route and then they go to the church. And they hit the church first, you know. And my dad would forever give them money. And, you know, we never had money. So my brother and I would say, they will give us the money. They're wasting that money, man. No, the Bible says you might be entertaining an angel unawares. <laughs> we try to be angels, but he never gave us the money. <laughs> but i never forget one day the telephone rang at 12 o'clock. And they always quoted the Assemblies of God preachers in all the towns. In those days, the Assemblies of God was one big organization. And so they would say, Brother so-and-so from Queenstown, which was on the way, you know, he sends his blessing. <laughs> and my dad will just be in another zone. These people phoned at like 12 o'clock at night, and you know, same story, and said, we're on the station with my six kids, you know, and my wife. Can you please bring us scrambled, scrambled egg sandwiches? 
That's like what, 12 o'clock at night, a specific order. And, uh, and uh, I don't, he didn't take the scrambled egg sandwiches. He never had patience. I mean, no, he took, he took them. And, uh, but the point I'm making is it's a labor of love, guys. And, and, and I want to encourage us today. But there's blessing in laboring. There's heartache and sorrow because there's no guarantee. You don't know. You can't guarantee the outcome. But one thing you do is you leave a mark of Jesus in people's lives. And so Paul says, God has not forgotten your labor of love. He remembers your labor of love. Um, and so on and so forth. Um, and yeah. <laughs> the last verse says, And be not slothful, verse 12, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. Be not slothful. That's lazy. Eh? Be not slothful. Okay, so listen to this now. Um, on, in the background of all of that, I love these scriptures. Um, verse 13, where, where we, we read now, For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. Okay? Saying, surely in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thee. And when you go and read in the Old Testament, it says to us, I will bless those that bless you, and I will curse those that curse you. And I'm going to make your offspring as the stars of the heaven. These are all part of the blessing God Abraham, God gave to Abraham. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, he goes on and he says, and so after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men swear by greater, and an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. So, you know the concept. Um, nowadays, especially... <laughs> Everything has to be written down. Mm. In those days, a handshake was still worth something. Mm. But uh, nowadays, like I've always, if you go to the bank to, to loan money to buy a car, you sign your whole life away. Even a cell phone. Do you ever read all that fine print? You just it put a fear in it. Do you know what it says there? <laughs> it says if you don't pay your bill, your husband's going to jail. How blessed are you? <laughs> you can get rid of your husband just don't pay yourself phone call. I'm sure it says that I don't read that but you don't read all but once and you can say to the man listen I promise I'll pay my cell phone bill but I don't want to I'm too lazy to read this I don't want to sign this he says no no you sign them otherwise I can't give you your new fancy super duper cell phone so you can take selfies of yourself you know? um, uh, but you've got to sign and once you've signed they just give everything to you you know what I mean? You don't sign them. Uh, you don't pay your motor car. They'll buy. They'll send your motor car to their friend for a quarter of the price, and then come fetch all your furniture for the other price and your house and everything. And and but the moment you've signed, there's just a and, and the Bible says here to us. Um, that's because man cannot guarantee their work. You can't guarantee even if you've got good intentions. You can't guarantee your word. You right. So you, maybe you are honest. Maybe you will pay everything, but something might happen where you can't, so they want guarantees. But when it comes to God, if God makes a promise, then it's, He can guarantee His promise, and He's upright, and He's righteous, and He can promise, so it seems, He can make a, a promise because he can, he can guarantee the outcome. So He says over here, listen to this. Uh, um, Verse, verse 17 is the beautiful verse. Wherein God more abundantly, um, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of salvation the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it with a oath. Now maybe, most probably in the Bible, that is the verse with the most double positives and superlatives. Um, willing more abundantly. That's a double positive. Eh? And a superlative. You don't speak like that to your wife. If you say to her, honey, I'm willing more abundantly to show unto you the immutability of my counsel. 
Sure, most probably said, what did you have to do? Stand here. What did you have to drink? Yeah, what did you have to drink? God is expressing to us that he wants us to know, in Afrikaans, I don't know what, that's immutability of his counsel. In other words, the perfectness, come as we in Afrikaans, the onverganklikheid van sy raad. Onveranderlikheid. Onveranderlikheid, okay. On for undergate van say rod, votuan. The immutability of his counsel. He wants to show to us that he confirmed it with an oath. So God swore. And because he could not swear by any greater, he swore by himself. So he said, So he said, he said to Abraham, Listen, it's me, God speaking. I'm going to bless you. Now, you don't understand that. That's why you're not saying, wow. If I have to come to you and say, I'm going to bless you, then what you can expect is a coffee and a muffin at the local <laughs> coffee shop. You understand? And a, a drive. Maybe I can take you for a ride in my Isuzu, you know? Or something like that. But that's about as much of a treat I can give you. But if Bill Gates came to you and said, come with you, me, I want to bless you with my credit card. Can you imagine his credit card? That's a credit card I want. I want his credit card. Because you couldn't swipe it fast enough. You know that. <laughs> There's not enough stuff in, a, in Frankfurt you could buy with that card. You go and buy the whole corporacy like that. One shot. <laughs> every John Deere, every tractor, every truck, every house. And, and he, he, you won't even dent his, 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 uh, his, his uh, balance. It'll still be going up the whole time. And if, if Bill Gates comes in here and says, guys, lucky day, I'm going to bless this whole lounge and your whole family. Come with me. Good, Will Fern husband. Come, go. Go, 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 go. There's something glue with this. Or Bill Gates himself is this. We're going to all mooi things get. Dank so long. Schrijf neer. Maak go, maak plannen. And you'd be able to do it for these credit cards. That's how wealthy he is. But when God says to us, I'm going to bless you. You know, Bill Gates hasn't even got anything on God. No. Mm -hmm. he, he could do what Bill Gates does. Well, you know, he, and he says to Abraham, I'm going to bless you. Abraham should have said, well, that's all I needed. But God knew the weakness of the flesh. Mm. And he says, Abraham, I'm God. I'm going to bless you. But just to set you at ease, I'm going to swear. I swear. You know, we're allowed to swear. You know that? It's a sin to swear. You can't swear because you can't guarantee your word. All you can do is say, I confirm, I'll do my best. We'll see what we can do. You know? And, but God swore. Those are strong words. He swore and he confirmed it with an oath. In other words, he had a contract with him. A covenant with Abraham. And he says, I'm doing that. That you might understand. I I'm going to bless you. That's powerful. And that's exactly what God, because the previous verses, you know, guys, God calls us to serve him. And we mustn't fool ourselves. It's not easy. If anyone tells you it's easy, sommer geem a klap, and dan bid jy daar na vorm. Want hy het evers, as die klits kweet, evers. Verstaan jy? It's not easy. It's not easy. Come on. Hey, you've got to be watching the whole time for your wickets. You watch for your wickets. You watch for your children's wickets. You watch for the believers' wickets. You must hear what Paul says. He writes there and he says all about his troubles. He says, troubles from without. Troubles from my countrymen. And he says, troubles within. He's even got his own troubles. That's why if anyone says to you, how are you? You must, my answer is the best. No new problems, thank you. Just the same old ones. But when someone says no problems, then leave him. He must so much forgiveness for him. Troubles within. Within. We were seeing the other day, the last night I was there with the guys at Poch and um, we sang some other song and I just became so aware of the weakness of my, of fear. Because mm. huh? mm. you put on a brave face. The men aren't allowed to. I've learned. You must never tell your wife you're worried. You must look unworried all the time. 
<laughs> because if you think that she's worried, then she gets doubly worried. But in your heart, your heart is like shaking like this. You, know? you say, well, I hope I'm going to make it through this one. And, and, um, and, and it, 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 our hearts are, we are weak. But God comes, uh, Paul says, fight fears within. Fears without, struggles without. Then he says, and besides that, all the burdens of all the fellowships. That's our poor old Paul. Are you with me? And, 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 but God comes and says to us, and that's, that's how life is. And listen, if you don't want those troubles, you can have the troubles of the world. And they, these at least are under the control of God. The world's troubles are under the influence of the devil. The devil. You, you, you've never seen anything as wicked as the devil. But it's, it's this corrupt world we're living in. And, but Jesus comes to us like he came to, to Abraham and he says, Listen, I'm going to bless you. And I'm only even going to bless those that bless you. Mm. How's that? And as we walk and we, we're living in God's protection, of course, Israel is a beautiful picture of that, isn't it? Mm. But even though they're disobedient at the moment, God is still blessing them. And you're going to look at all the countries that love them are blessed. Mm. And our country, I say publicly, mm. used to love Israel. Mm. And now they hate Israel. Mm. And they've even sided with the enemy. We're busy siding with all Israel's enemies mm. as we speak. Mm. So expect more chaos. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. For sure. America's America's going, to, going exactly the same route because they've got a, a, a government that, that it doesn't actually love Israel. Mm. If they had it their way, they wouldn't like to be in, in a relationship. They're only doing it because of money. Because they're selling them all those jets. Mm. They're buying a huge amount of jets from America. All their fighting equipment comes from America. So, so, and, and God says to Abraham, in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thee. And he says he confirmed with an oath. And of course, God comes to us with the same blessing, right? Now, of course, guys, it's not financially. And I always say this because everyone, everyone will say, no, well, why am I then poor? I don't know why. You get poor people, you get rich people, you get middle people. I don't know how it works. Right? Mm. Just be happy where you are. That's what God says. Yeah. I look after you in wherever I've put you. You know, don't get too confused about that. All right. And so on and so forth. And then, and then, and then, um, and of course, the covenant that we have, the Lord Jesus was the final manifestation of all the covenants in the Bible. God made a covenant with Noah. He made a covenant with Abraham, with the children of Israel. And Jesus came as the fulfillment of all those covenants. And we're included in all those covenants. And he is the, the ratification of those covenants. And so as we leave to serve the Lord, he says, remember, I'm blessing you and my hand is upon you. Now sometimes it's hard to remember that, isn't it? It is. Sometimes you say, Lord, well, this doesn't seem, feel like blessing to me. And sometimes we're not listening and then, you know, he just has to... The, the promise never leaves. But as a disobedient child, because Hebrews also teaches that, he says, he chastises every child he receives. I didn't write that. I don't know how the uh, charismaniacs get over that one. But how's he going to chastise you without a hard time? Right? It doesn't help when your child's naughty and you go, <laughs> do it! <laughs> if, that was how, if that was my punishment, I would have been naughty all the time if it's long. <laughs> but he chastises us in our spirits uh, he chastises us in many many ways that we might just remind us to stay in the blessing okay but listen I just want to finish with this thought and, and so when you read in Romans chapter 4 and don't, you don't have to go there it just says this. So what do we have to say about Abraham? 
Okay, just to, I'm going to just finish with this thought. Just the, Abraham, when God said, I'm going to bless you, Abraham said, I believe you. That's what he said. The Bible says so. so in, in Romans chapter 4, it says to us, what are we going to, what can we say about, what, what can we, this man, this is the wrong, it's the wrong line. He says, what can we say about Abraham? He said, Abraham walked in faith. He believed God. That's what he's going to say about Abraham. And so God makes him a promise over here. He goes on a promise. <coughs> Just a promise. Nothing has happened yet. And the promises are actually quite ridiculous. Because he's going to have him, give him lots of children, and he has, he's 75. He's had no children. I would struggle to believe that. Huh? But the Bible says he believed God. And so then the Bible says, because he believed, right? Because he believed, God said, I call you righteous. Righteous. You know what righteous means? Righteous means perfect. Now the only one who's perfect is my wife, right? <laughs> well, that's what she tells me. I'm joking. He calls you perfect. Perfect. Come on. Perfect. Now, perfect is perfect. If God says you're righteous, you're righteous. Not a little bit righteous, not half righteous, not 10% righteous, righteous. And so, and guess what? What had he done? Well, he'd not done anything yet. You know, and, and, and listen to this. How do we know you're righteous? Ons moet eerst sien. Weet jy het nou begin? Ons gaan sien as jy righteous is. Not so. That could be the reasoning. But the reasoning of God is if you prepare to believe him, he calls you righteous. Right? And, and of course, he went along and, and he did he did many things. He, he moved. Remember? He moved. Why was his move so amazing? We never knew where he was going. He packed his bags and Alice said, Fent is sleep far and said, Halax. And I right by the the yard eight. She said, Where are we going? I will go Come along. And he was riding along, you know? Got to Joburg. And God didn't tell him where he was going, but he was living in the promise. Not so. He, he moved, um, and then 12 years, he's waiting for children, and then Ishmael comes along. He's very excited. That was 12 years. 12 years later, God arrives. And says to him, who? Right by the wrong mother. He's so excited to present Ishmael. Okay. Here he is. Um, and so we can, I don't know what to take too much more time. And then what happens? The big C, circumcision. At 99. God says you must be circumcised. You know? That's a crazy idea. <laughs> who would have Googled? How many men at 99 have ever been circumcised by their no. wives? <laughs> 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 I don't know. It must have been his wife, you know. He says, this is not been praying. I need to be circumcised. <laughs> she just bring that blunt scissors, you know. You know. Um, but he, he obeyed in circumcision. It was like a crazy idea. Not so. Um, and then Isaac was born. Isaac was born after circumcision. For a long story. And then, and then uh, 12 years later it goes by. So now we're about, about 36 years. From the beginning, God says to him, sacrifice your son, your only son, which tells me Ishmael was not a son. Mm -hmm. God didn't see Ishmael as a son because it was not his part of his plan. And my th so if you look at Abraham, man, he, he was an amazing man by the things he did. <laughs> but God says, in that portion of scripture, what made him amazing is that he believed the promise. Yeah. 
Not what he did. He was not commended for his works. He was commended for believing the promise. So when God, in fact, I don't know, I love that thought. Because mm. uh, my encouragement is not to do more, but to believe the promise. Mm. Then what I do, do is just blessed automatically. But the commendation of God is, do I really believe the promise? And that's within all of our reach. Not so? Everyone sitting over here is able to believe. There's not one who's excluded. And God sends his word to encourage us to believe. He, all the time he's sending encouragements. Come on, believe, believe, believe. I want to encourage us. The beginning of a great walk with Jesus is believing the promise, not doing some amazing thing. I don't know, I love the gospel. It's absolutely amazing. And when I rise from a place of believing, I tell you what, friends, life becomes different. That's when life becomes different. And so, I don't know, I was just so encouraged by those thoughts. While God presents an incredible challenge in chapter 6, there's a huge challenge there, but He, he presents it with an incredible encouragement. And He says, I'm going to bless you, and I'm God, but I will promise and I'll confirm it with an oath. I'll swear. And it says there, that by two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie. He cannot lie. And he gave us two promises. And he cannot lie. That is so, that sign sealed and delivered. And so I encourage us. Let's believe, grab hold of everything that is already ours. Amen. Amen. Let me put some. Yeah. So, Lord, we thank you for your word, how blessed we are to be here. Lord, we thank you for this place. Lord, we thank you for the word that flows here. We thank you for the many homes that are touched and reached by <coughs> our Bible study that you've given us. So I pray, Lord, for all the families of everyone sitting here, every last child, every grandchild, Lord, every distant relative, Lord, that, that the power that is within us this morning is able to reach to all those people that they might be affected by Jesus Christ. I pray for those, Lord, in our lives which are struggling to, to find you as their Savior. Lord Jesus, we pray for a miracle in every life. Lord, please, in these last days, just before you come and fetch us, may the blessing of Abraham, which is now ours, flow through us into them. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.